uh, through television, through radio, and from live streaming. We appreciate you uh, tuning us in. Hopefully this will be a blessing to you. Um, I also want to encourage you, if you're watching my Facebook, to uh, maybe share this on your Facebook page. Uh, if you're watching my television, call someone and tell them that you're that we're on, what channel uh, that we're on in your area. If you're listening by radio, uh, you can also go to our website, www.theshepherdshouse.net, and you can get the entirety of the uh, program uh, that's aired today there and you can also get several other videos and we've got some in the archives well over 200 videos that you can view and share that with other people in other countries uh, it in the Word of God in Matthew chapter number 7 Matthew chapter number 7 I'm going to read some scripture there just some very familiar scripture in the Lord has really burdened me uh, today uh, because of the people all around the world that are lost and without God. And I know I've been ministering quite a bit lately to people, encouraging them and uh, trying to point them in the right area and tell them that the Lord uh, is the best thing uh, that you can ever receive and how important it is to know Him. But I want to go even a little bit stronger in that area today. Unless we're born again of the Spirit and the power of God, we're not going to make it to heaven. We have no hope at all if it was not not for the power of God that lives within us. Amen. It's not just going to church. It's not going to get us to heaven. I had a friend of mine that said many times down through the years, and I've repeated his saying, if going to church every Sunday will make a Christian out of you, then going to the barn ought to make a cow out of you. Amen. I don't believe that's going to happen, do you? No, and going to church by itself will not get you into heaven. You must be born again of the Spirit and the power of God. And many people today have been deceived thinking that power and real happiness comes uh, through the possessions that you own and by the things that you have acquired and by the things uh, that we have obtained, uh, amen, and by being lifted up in the flesh uh, that for somehow or another we're better off than anyone else. Amen. But it's not that way. You can see some of the richest people that there is on the planet, and they are absolutely miserable. Two things that happens to the most of the people that are filthy rich. Number one, uh, they wind up having to go into seclusion uh, because everybody wants to borrow some money, and you've got more family members than you ever realized, Ken folks, uh, uh, that you ever realized you could ever had. Uh, amen. And all of them want to borrow money and everybody wanting something now. amen all the time uh, and the second thing is uh, amen you realize uh, that when you've got all of those things uh, there's still something missing unless you have Jesus uh, amen so therefore you could have plenty of money and have Jesus uh, but having plenty of money by itself will not make you happy and it certainly will not get us into the kingdom of heaven we cannot buy our way into the kingdom of God we have to get there through and by the blood of Jesus uh, and by having a personal experience uh, with him. And every one of us as Christians uh, needs to also remember this. Uh, it's our job to try to reach out to other people. Amen. It's our job, amen, to try to win uh, others to Christ. Uh, amen. If you have found something that is wonderful, don't you want to share that with other people? Well, of course you do. Amen. When anything that's good. If they're having a sale on uh, Coca-Cola products uh, at Walmart, you'll put it on Facebook. You'll call everybody that you can think of and say, hey, look, uh, they got a special. You can buy them for half price uh, or whatever. I just said Walmart. Maybe it's a dollar store or wherever that it may be that you got them on a half price. You want to tell everybody about the good news uh, of something that's great uh, and you want them to get the benefit. Uh, amen. 
we need to be sharing the word of God, amen, letting other people know, amen, that we can get the benefit, uh, amen, out of salvation. You probably need to turn the house monitors, or not the monitors, the house speakers down. I'm echoing a little bit in this place. But anyway, the monitors are fine. But anyway, uh, so uh, therefore, uh, we need to be sharing the gospel with other people, saying, hey, I'll tell you something good. His name is Jesus. Uh, I've got hope uh, beyond this life, uh, beyond the undertaker, beyond the future of the grave. Uh, I've got hope, uh, amen, in another world, in another life uh, after this one. Uh, and every one of us, uh, amen, ought to be uh, wise enough to be able to understand, uh, amen, that we're not going to be here forever. If you look at yourself, uh, amen, your body has changed over the last few years. Uh, I've got gray hair and less hair. I've got a little extra weight, uh, and some things uh, that I once can do, uh, I don't do as good as I once did. I can still hold up with anybody my age, uh, and some half my age, uh, amen, when he comes to working, amen, the most of the time, amen, without a problem. I put a lot of people to shame, uh, but when it comes to getting down and getting back up again, amen, I sound like a Rice Krispie commercial, snap, crackle, pop, uh, amen, so I know that my, my body's getting a little bit older, and amen, and I know that I'm changing. Uh, I know I'm getting closer to that appointed time. Uh, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die after death uh, is uh, the judgment. Uh, so far, nobody has ever been able, amen, to, uh, to extend their life, uh, amen, forever. I think it was it Ponce de Leon, was that who it was, that was looking for the fountain of youth, uh, uh, and he landed in Florida. Amen. What a surprise he got. Amen. He drank it, uh, amen, from the what he thought was the fountain of youth so he could live forever. He's dead now. Have you seen old Potts lately? I hadn't saw him either. He's not around. Uh, amen. So therefore we know, uh, amen, that we're not going to live, uh, amen, forever. Uh, we've got the grave markers uh, in the cemeteries, uh, amen, that's got the date of birth uh, and the date of death. Uh, we have got proof, uh, amen, that they're no longer among us. Uh, amen. They're gone to another place, uh, amen, in another land. Uh, amen. If you're ready to meet God, uh, you can see them at another time. Uh, if they're not ready to meet God. Uh, amen. I hope that you don't see them anymore because you won't even recognize them. Uh, amen. Because you'll be in as much pain as what they're in. But those of us uh, that are ready to meet God, we've got hope. Uh, amen. In a better place, uh, another life. Uh, amen. We can shout. Uh, amen. Victory and know. Uh, amen. That the grave uh, is only a thing. Uh, it did not come. Uh, amen. To hold us down. It did not come to destroy us. Uh, Amen. It's only a season, uh, amen, that we're going to go through. Thank God uh, we've got hope, uh, amen, not in this life only. Paul said, if I had hope in this life only of all men, I would be uh, most miserable. Amen. What he was trying to say is uh, all I live for is going to meet Jesus. Uh, all my hope uh, is that I have is not in this world. Uh, it's in the world to come. Uh, praise God. I'm not going to have to worry about, amen, Give God praise. Uh, being rich, uh, amen, when I get up there. The poorest person, uh, amen, here in this life, uh, if they know Jesus as their personal Savior, amen, we'll all be rich uh, when we make it to heaven. Uh, amen, it'll be wonderful up there. Amen, we won't be divided uh, and separated, uh, amen, because of our wealth uh, and our possessions. Uh, amen, there's some people that will judge you whether or not they want to be around you or not, amen, by the car that that you drive and the clothes that you wear. Some, uh, amen, put you in categories, uh, amen, but I'm thankful that when we get to heaven, we'll all be exactly the same, uh, amen. It's just that those that don't know the Lord won't make it there. We need to build upon things, uh, amen, that's going to last, uh, amen, forever. Did you ever see a car that lasted forever? I've saw some antiques, uh, but they're not going to last forever. Most of them gets crushed uh, and melted down, chopped up, uh, amen, and sent to uh, an iron core factory somewhere, and they are melted down and made into new ones, uh, amen. Every one of the horses, uh, amen, uh, sooner or later, they're going to die. So 
so there's no transportation. It's going to last forever. Uh, amen. They've got some of the spaceships uh, now in some of the space uh, uh, museums and so on and so forth. Uh, they were used at one time, but they're not used anymore. Uh, amen. Everything will come to an end. Uh, it's all about uh, when it comes for our end. Uh, amen. Are we going to be ready to meet God uh, or are we going to be left behind? My heart goes out to people, amen, that are still trying to decide if they want to live for the Lord uh, or if they want to live for the world. Uh, or, Brother Jimmy, I want to live for the Lord, but there's just things that bothers me. You ain't made your mind up yet. Uh, amen. When things, uh, amen, uh, bothers you, amen, you're going to take it to the Lord uh, and you're going to overcome. Uh, amen. There's a whole lot of people uh, that's going to church uh, that's got a testimony, I've been saved, but you sure don't live like like. They've been saved, uh, and they don't live like they've got hope. Uh, amen. Everything that you're doing uh, is trying to beautify or magnify what they've got in this world. Uh, amen. I want you to know, when you fall in love with the Lord, uh, it's okay to have, amen, a few things down here. I'm not telling you, you got to live in a shack, uh, drive a clunker, and wear uh, 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 shoes that's got holes in them, or holes in your pants to be holy. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. I don't want you to identify with that. What I want you to know is today, uh, amen, we need to wear the best that we got. Be happy with what the Lord has allowed us to have. But that's not what's going to make us great. Uh, amen. It's what's on the inside uh, of our heart. Uh, that's what's going to make the difference. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's not in how you dress. See, I could have wore a three-piece suit today, and I've got one of them. i got a whole closet full of neckties. I plan on them staying in there for the most of the part. Amen. i got a whole lot of long sleeve shirts. I wear them every now and then. I've got some coats. i got one laying right under there. I can take them for a few minutes, and ain't no use of trying, amen, to preach. I know I'll be out of it in three or four minutes. Might as well just take it off before we get started. But it's not going to help me to preach uh, wearing a chain around my neck uh, with a cross on it. Uh, it's not going to make me holy. It's what's on the inside and what comes from God uh, is what's going to make the difference. Uh, amen. We need to build, uh, amen, our hope, uh, amen, in Jesus Christ. Uh, not build our hopes uh, upon the false things uh, of this life. I'm going to read the scripture. I've not lost where I'm going. I'm just getting warmed up, getting primed a little bit. Amen. Here this morning, uh, amen, there's things that we need to understand, uh, amen, there's more than what meets the eye, amen, there's better things, uh, amen, than what the world has to offer, the world is trying to tell you, yeah, your hope is in better clothing, a better car, more vacation time, oh, let me stop right there for just a minute. Thank God for vacation. I take one, about one or, or two a year, amen, uh, for a few days, uh, amen, to try to get some rest. Uh, I don't do that as often as I need to. Uh, that's one of my downfalls. Uh, I go wide open seven days a week, uh, amen. The Sabbath day is on Sunday, and I preach three times, uh, amen. I, I do uh, uh, videos, uh, amen, sometimes do visiting and other things around the church uh, on my day of rest. I stay busy, 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 busy. I figure I'm either going to rust out or wear out. I just think I'd rather wear out as I had. Amen to rust out. But it's good to take vacation. But the world has went vacation nuts. Amen. I had a doctor that my wife goes to. They went on a week's vacation, come back and worked a week. Amen. Uh, left at dinner on Friday and took off the next four days for uh, the 4th of July. I thought, man, ain't nothing like working. Uh, amen. Getting two vacations every month uh, and working two weeks. Uh, staggering so you don't get overwhelmed. Hey man, that's where America is today. Hey man, everybody. Hey man, I, I got this one employee that works for me, and they may be watching this. And if they do, I can't help it. I tell it to their face. Amen. But anyway, they're all excited. If they get a chance, it slows down, gets quiet a little bit. They volunteer to go home. Amen. We decide, amen, we're going to take the ones that wants to work to work on the 4th of July. And everybody that wants off, we're going to let you have off. I want off. They're the first one. And when the paycheck comes in, they say, I'm going to have to find me another job. I'm not getting enough hours here. I can't make it financially. I don't know how in the world I'm going to make it. Amen. They ain't added two plus two together. You got to work to get paid. 
Amen. Amen. But America today, amen, they want a whole day siesta. Amen. And then to get a paycheck. Amen. At the end of the day, everybody wants time off. Everybody wants it easy. But see, having vacation, having them plenty of clothing, amen, having them plenty of cars and all kinds of money, amen, to buy gadgets, amen, for everything. Amen. We're going to finally get to the place. Amen. We got an automatic everything. Amen. He's going to get an automatic feeder. All you have to do is sit down in a chair and open your mouth and it spoons it for you. I remember watch George Jetson's uh, on cartoon on TV. I always uh, looked at George Jetson and I said, you know what? That's a, that, that's what I need. Be laying in bed, the alarm clock goes off and this clamp comes, uh, amen, in behind the bed, uh, grabs you by the back of your pajamas uh, and puts you in the shower, amen, while you're trying to wake up uh, and when you step out of the shower, there's a cup of coffee uh, already made and that robot's got that cup of coffee, uh, amen, right there. That's the American dream, uh, amen, having it easy, uh, amen, and have it made and not have to do nothing just plug it in turn it on and all we have to do is just lay around and sip on the straw Amen. Uh, and get it out of the container. Well, Brother Jimmy, what would they do after that? I don't know. Uh, amen. They probably try to find a way, amen, to put a respirator on you so your heart won't wear you out by beating. Amen. I don't know where the next level of laziness is going to go to. Amen. But this is where we are. We pampered. Uh, amen. We become lazy and we want all we can get. Uh, amen. To satisfy the flesh uh, that's on its way to our graveyard. Uh, but what we need to be uh, doing uh, is making sure, uh, amen, that we're ready to meet God. Uh, amen. There's many. Give God praise. Uh, amen. There's many that's in churches. Uh, amen. Across the land today. Amen. They struggle. They're in and they're out. And they're in and they're out. Amen. Well, Bill Jimmy, they just having problems. Yeah. The number one problem is, amen, giving everything to the Lord. Amen. In the first place. Amen. They instead of getting saved. Amen. They got the analogy. Amen. Let's make a deal. Lord, I'll give you a little of this and I'll give you a part of that. Amen. The Lord's not wanting your tractor. He ain't wanting your car. Amen. He's not wanting your cattle. Amen. He's got all of those things. What he's wanting is your love. Your your attention. Uh, amen. He's wanting your heart. Uh, and he wants to be able to lead and to guide you uh, and to bless you and to give you happiness. Uh, amen. Where the deceitfulness of riches uh, has stolen away. Uh, amen. The joy. Uh, amen. Of the Lord. Amen. Listen, the church, uh, amen, wants to know where real joy is. Uh, amen, the real joy is down on our knees. Uh, amen, praying. Uh, amen, the real joy is worshiping the Lord uh, and thanking him for what he done on the cross. Uh, amen, real joy is going to church, not trying to see how many times, uh, amen, you can miss church. Uh, amen, and do the things of the world. Uh, amen, but going to church. Uh, I know sometimes people think, Brother Jimmy, you crazy. You just go to church uh, all the time. I go as much as I can, amen, as many times as I can. Amen. My dad, uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He's a church goingest man you ever seen. Uh, amen. There was only, only thing that pressed him was there was only seven nights a week he could go to church. Hey man, it may kind of bothered him. Uh, hey man, that he couldn't work another week in there where he could get one more revival service somewhere that he could slide into in a week's time. Uh, hey man, that's the only thing that bothered him. And if you wanted to get him depressed, uh, hey man, you just let him come a big snow where he couldn't get out and he really got down. So he missed church. Uh, hey man, but the majority of the world today, they can miss church for six months uh, and it wouldn't bother them anymore than me taking this handkerchief out and throwing it right there. But that's See how that whooped me? Didn't look like it bothered me a bit. Y'all see any tears come to my eye over throwing that handkerchief right there? That's the way the most of folks is about going to church. It bothers you even less than it did for me to do that. Amen, Brother Jimmy. Praise the Lord. Preach it on. Amen. Some of his hearts done stopped. Amen. We'll come back. Amen. We'll try to get a deacon to resuscitate you here in a minute. Hey amen, but see the, see the thing about it is uh, when you love the Lord, uh, amen, you despise the world. Uh, we're only here for a short time, uh, amen. 
If you're just like, I want to get all the gusto I can, I want to enjoy the world all that I can, well, I want to enjoy life, I want to enjoy being with family, and I want to go to church. Amen. I want to be able to go every time that I can. Amen. When I go on vacation, I don't take a vacation from God. Amen. I go to church how often? Three times a week, just like I do. Amen. When I'm here, amen, I don't take a vacation from God. I don't need a vacation from God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need all that I can get from him. Amen. I need to go to church all that I can. Amen. I'm getting into the word here in just a moment. Just hang on to your hat. I got to wait for the anointing to slow down so I can get to it. Amen. But listen, what we need to understand is we need to be building our faith on Jesus Christ. Make up our mind. Do you want to serve the world or do you want to serve Jesus? If you want to serve Jesus, turn your back on the world. Amen. And live for him. If you want to serve the world, amen, just go ahead and get out, amen, and live for them, and you'll get to scream with them in the fires of hell one day after a while. But the Lord can't ever have, uh, have anybody serve him that's teeter-tottering in between the world and him. Amen. The, the, the Bible plainly tells us, uh, amen, if we love God, the world, more than we do the Lord, we're not going to make it. Can I read that to you in the Scripture? Whew, I'm going to do backwards this time. Usually reading and preach. This time I'm preaching and then going to read. Might wind up preaching a little bit more. Amen. That's why I try to follow the Spirit and see how the Lord's wanting to move. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 7 now, and verse number 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Let me stop there for just a minute. Can I do a little teaching here? The will of the Father in heaven is not for you to lay out a church. Amen. The will of the Father in heaven is not for you to get entangled in the world with everything you can get a hold of and only think about him every now and then when somebody dies. Amen. That's not the will of the Father. Amen. Many will say to me in verse 22, Lord, Lord, have we not preached, or the words in the Bible says prophesied, and that's what it means, in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Let me stop here for just a minute. Or Brother Jimmy, how in the world can people cast out devils uh, and them not be right with God? It's in the name of Jesus uh, that the devils have to flee. Amen. It's not in their power in the first place. Amen. So that's what we've got to understand. That's how people that claims to be religious, amen, looks like they've got the works, but they really don't have it. Amen. Really don't have it. Let's say we've done all these things. We have prophesied your name. We cast out devils. Thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Those that practice sin. Can I stop there? I feel like I'm going to have to teach a little now. Amen. Uh, that means practicing sin. Those that does iniquity. There's a difference in being overwhelmed in a fault. There's a difference in having a weak area in your life that you constantly have to deal with prayer and supplication in order to overcome that weakness. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, amen. But it's another just uh, uh, just rear back uh, and voluntarily sin with no remorse. Uh, amen. Expecting no repercussions. It's not going to happen. Amen. It's going to come. The repercussion's going to come. Amen. Because of sin. Amen. There's no way, amen, to get out of it. You can jump off the Empire State Building, change your mind on the 21st floor, but it ain't going to do much good. Amen. Not going to do much good. Amen. That's the way it is with those that are willfully sinning. Amen. You're tramping the blood of Jesus under your feet. Amen. When you willfully sin. Amen. There's a great big difference in someone. Amen. Repenting. Amen. Daily. Amen. Picking up their uh, their head and going on than it is. I guess I just got out. I made a mistake and I'll just miss six months. That ain't going to get you to heaven. Uh, amen. I'll go back and repent. Uh, amen. You go back and repent, and you do that several times, uh, and then every time you testify, the church will be looking up at the ceiling because they don't want to hear what you got to say because they ain't got no confidence in you because they know you are a teeter-totterer. 
your plan. You're in and you out. But Jimmy, I had some things that came against me. Well, bless your heart. Hey, man, I don't know of anybody that don't have things, uh, hey, man, that comes against us. We're going to have obstacles. Uh, that's not going to stop uh, until you get to heaven. We are in the world that's full of darkness. Uh, hey, man, it's up to us to share the marvelous light of the Lord. Therefore, in verse 24, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. How many knows Jesus is a rock? Amen. The Word of God is a rock. Verse 26, And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man who had built his house upon the sand. Can I stop there for just a moment? Now, who in the world would be a foolish man? Those that comes in, they look at the preacher, they nod their head, they say amen, they go right back out and do the same thing they did before. They're not hearing the words of the Lord. They're not taking the preaching to heart. They're not applying that, amen, uh, to themselves, amen. They're just looking at it, amen, and not doing it. Verse 27, and the rain descended, uh, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Amen. But those that build their house upon the rock, the winds is going to come, the rains is going to come, but it's going to stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these things, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Amen. He taught them that you must be born again of the Spirit and the power of God. He taught them that you must forsake yourself, forsake the things of the world, and pick up your cross and follow me. Amen. He was teaching us, amen, to follow him on a day-to-day -day basis. That does not mean you have to sell your house and your car and all your possessions to follow the Lord. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that those things cannot be number one in your life. Can I share this with you and make it a little easier to understand? Do you hunger for revival more than you do for a new car that you're getting ready to trade? Do you hunger for revival more than going to Sears and looking for a new suit to wear? Do you hunger for revival more, you ladies, than going to the mall and shopping for another pair of shoes to add to your 200 collection? Hey, man, does that excite you? Do you long for the day that me and the girls can get together and go to the mall and we get us something to eat and we can chit-chat and talk and we can shop till we drop? Or do you want to be able to have such a desire, I can't wait to get to revival and pray for revival and come and sit on the edge of the seat, taking in every word, seeing what I can do to help be a part of this and praying the power down and being excited and call all your friends. Hey, we're having revival over to church. I want you to come. Amen. Which is the one, amen, that moves you the most? Now, some would say, well, I moved more about revival. Amen. Are you really? Stop and think about it. Have you been chomping into bits for two or three weeks, getting ready for it? Or you been thinking about going to the mall? Are you men thinking about going to a tool store somewhere? You thought I was just going to preach on the women, didn't you? Oh, no, us men likes to go to them tool stores. I get lost in a tool store. Amen, looking at all them things that you can saw and cut holes out with and <laughs> grind. Amen, even things that I got, I like to update every now and then, get something a little bit more modern. And most of us has got a garage hanging full of stuff that's never been used. Hey, man, but one day, if I ever figure out what a Dremel is used for, I'll get that thing out and I'm going to whoop it on something. Amen. I, I, I mean, I'm, I just can't wait, amen, till the day and we get excited about those things. Are we as excited, amen, about going to revival as we are going into tool world? Man, you go by tool world, my car goes, oh, it's out of control. 
He goes right up here to a parking place. I've got to go into two world like I need something else. Hey man, it's almost uncontrollable going into two world. But I'm the same way when it comes to revival. I got to go. If I'm sick, run to the toilet and I borrow for a few times, take some Pepto-Bismol and get in the car and go. Hey man, if you got a desire, Amen, like you need to. Uh, amen, I, can, can I share this? Boy, this is a different message than I thought he was going to, but I feel like just laying it out here today. Amen, several years ago, amen, I come down with, uh, let's see, IBS, irritated bowel syndrome. You don't need irritated bowel syndrome. I can tell you that right now. If it's between that and going to be with the Lord, you need to be saying, Lord, I'm coming home. Hey, Amen, because you sure don't want that. I can tell you that right now. It's the worst thing I ever went through. I, and I pastored a church, and I lived a one-hour drive, uh, amen, with pretty much no restrooms between uh, the lower part of Allen County than it was to the church. Back in those years, we was down in the old church. Uh, we only had one toilet. Uh, and my prayer was uh, for the first ten miles, uh, amen, that I needed to go. Amen, Lord, help me get there. And the last mile is, Lord, don't let anybody be in there when I get there. Amen. Uh, that's, and, and, and many times I've, I've went to the deacon uh, and, and said, now, you know, if you see me jump up, uh, you run up there and give your testimony till I get back. Uh, you know what's going on. Amen, I've done that. Amen, I passed the church. Amen, I had a modium in, in the glove compartment of both vehicles. Amen, I had a modium AD. Amen, everywhere in every building that I worked in. Amen, I had to do that to survive till I got over it. Well, what caused you to have that in the first place? I did tell you I pastored, didn't I? Amen. You either get irritated bowel syndrome or they put you in Hopkinsville, one or the other. I chose the irritated bowel syndrome before they sent me there. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Later on, I got rid of some of the nuts. Uh, amen. That I was having the drama queens and kings. Uh, amen. The ones that didn't get saved, they left. Uh, amen. And then I could come in and have church. I hollered, hallelujah. Thank God this is the way it's supposed to be. Amen. You ought to try to herd a bunch of goats that's claiming to be sheep. It'll drive you nuts. <laughs> amen. But see, when you finally get them saved, uh, amen, and you realize they're sheep, uh, they don't give you any problem. A sheep gets his head down uh, like that. They're not up the head in the air and getting into trouble. Another message for another time. Hey, remember what I'm trying to say is uh, I chose to go to church. Uh, I chose not to be defeated. Uh, I chose not to whimper in wine. Uh, amen. And complain about the problem that I had. Uh, amen. Ninety-five percent of the people uh, other than the deacons uh, and two or three more did not have a clue. Uh, amen. That what I was even going through. They just thought, well, he, he left for a minute. He'll be back. I don't know what's going on. Must have had a phone call or something. They didn't know what was going on. I knew what was going on. And you know what? I didn't back up on none of my obligations. God saw me through it. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, amen, I don't have much passion, uh, amen, on whiners. Amen. Don't have much passion for whiners. Amen. And those, uh, amen, that tries, uh, amen, those that says, I can't find work, you ain't look for it. Amen. Those says, I don't know how, you ain't willing to learn. Those says, I just can't do it, you don't want to. Those that says, well, I'm having problems with this, well, welcome to the club, honey. Amen. We have problems with everything. Amen. But when you choose to follow the Lord and you choose to build upon the foundation, amen, God will let you find favor, amen, wherever that you need to find favor. Amen. Praise the Lord. I started home from uh, Glasgow one night and made it to Scottsville. Now, when I made it to Scottsville, I lived down there at that time. Oh, I still had 12 and a half or 13 miles to go when I made it to Scottsville. I went through Scottsville, and I said, Oh, Lord, what in the world am I going to do? I pulled into the Junior Foods that don't have a bathroom. They got signs up there at, at that time, no restrooms for the public. I run inside, and I said, Ma'am, I need to go. She said, Brother Jimmy, it'll be all right. She watched me on television. <laughs> she said, it's all right. You just go right on. 
And I come out and I said, I'm going to pray the Lord to just hug you real good and bless you real good. Thank you so much for letting me find favor. I had an emergency. She says, but look on your face. I knew you was telling me the truth. <laughs> That's what she said. She said, I watch you on television. I love you, Brother Jimmy. See, God will always make a way if we'll put forth our faith and we try. God will bless us. He will bless our efforts. He don't bless whining feeling sorry for ourselves and telling everybody how bad that I've got it. <laughs> I know you do. So is a hundred billion other people in America. <laughs> hey man, we all got something. Uh, hey man, we complain about it. It's some mumps, it's some measles, or it's a seven-year itch. Uh, it's either chiggers or mosquitoes. Uh, and if that don't get you, you'll be allergic to something. Hey man, there'll be something that's going to get you. I got a spot on my arm right there. They did nothing bite me. I got it up against some of this pressure-treated wood, uh, amen, and I didn't even know I was allergic to it, but I got the proof that it did. I got it right there years to evening. That's the only thing that I done, amen. It was pressure washed from the picnic table, uh, amen. I know that's where he come from. If it ain't one thing, it's something else. But you know what? I didn't stay out of church today, and I ain't going to miss work tomorrow. Hey man, because of a little mark that'll heal up in a day or two. Hey man, we've got to put our faith and our trust in God. I know this is different. Uh, hey man, if it's bothering you, it's probably because it, you're guilty. All right, James, chapter number four, verse number fourteen says, uh, "Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow." It means tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord uh, will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. So if we say that we ought to do this and we ought to do that, that we can do this, those boastings uh, are evil. What we need to say is, uh, if it be the Lord's will, uh, amen, that I'm going to be able to accomplish this, uh, if it be the Lord's will, he's going to allow me to live long enough to be able to get this thing done. Uh, amen. If it be the Lord's will, and that gives God praise uh, in everything that we've done, not as if we said that I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. That's nothing but evil boastings because we can say that we're going to build something uh, and wind up dying before we get the first nail drove. Uh, amen. We can say that we're going to accomplish something uh, and never get it done. Uh, amen. We can say, uh, amen, that I can do this. Uh, amen. But we cannot do that unless God gives us the grace and the mercy and the strength and the know-how in order to do those things. Amen. Only God, uh, amen, has the ability, amen, to do do that. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 6 verse 19 I'm going to read some more scripture. It says Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doeth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doeth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Let me stop there for just a minute. Those folks that think that, man, you've got happiness in all the things that you possess, uh, and then you've got to have two things. Number one, you've got to have security, uh, cameras, and some type of security to keep the thieves uh, from breaking through and stealing those things. And number two, then you've got to have insurance. Amen. Any of y'all insurance poor? Amen. If it wasn't for insurance, hadn't to pay insurance premiums. And I'm not woofing on the insurance companies. they got to make money same as everybody else. I understand that. But what I'm saying is if it wasn't for that, but see, if it wasn't for all of the thieves and the vandals and things like that, you wouldn't have to have so much insurance. And if it wasn't for the bums that's too lazy to work wanting to sue somebody, amen, for every little thing, you wouldn't have to have the liability, amen, to protect you in case somebody would rip your pantyhose walking across the, plat the parking lot. Hey, man, or get a cup of hot coffee. Y'all remember that McDonald's getting sued years ago by that nut? I hope she's watching the TV program. Hope she gets saved. 
amen, before she has to face a judgment, amen, uh, trying to sue McDonald's over uh, spilling hot coffee. Did you think he was going to get chilled? Hey, man, when the coffee was spilled on them, did she think she was going to get the giggles because it was lukewarm? I guarantee you, if it wasn't scalding hot, she'd been up there griping, my coffee's cold, it ain't hot. Hey, man, that's the way them type of people are. Hey, man, whine and cry, boy, what a message today. Hey, man, but that's where a lot of those people are. Hey, man, they want to whine and cry over every little thing, and they'll be the first one to, that wants to sue you, and you couldn't chase them down and give them a job. Amen. Praise the Lord. The truth is the truth. Amen. But you don't have to worry about those things getting stolen. Amen. In heaven, if we'll build up our treasure there. For where your treasure is, uh, there will your heart be also. Oh, won't that preach? If your treasure is at home, it'll be at home during church time. Oh, excuse me. I quit meddling and come back and preach now. Amen. See, but see, if your treasure is in church, uh, amen, you'll be fighting, amen, every way thing within you in order to get there. Because there's where your treasure is. I've got to go get my treasure. It's worshiping the Lord. Uh, amen, feeling his presence. Uh, well, Jimmy, I can do that here all by myself. You can every now and then. But there's a reason why the Scripture says, Fail not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen, as some manner is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're supposed to lift up one another in songs and hymns, amen, and, so, and, and, you know, and, and we're supposed to do this so much more as we see that day approaching. What day is it talking about? He's talking about the day, uh, the end of the world, the end of time, uh, amen. That's what he's talking about, amen. So therefore, we need to be looking at, uh, amen, whether or not we have a desire, amen, to serve God, or we got a desire, amen, to do other things. Uh, if everything else in the world excites you but going to church doesn't, you need to stop and examine yourself, amen, because where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. There's some folks, I mean, they are in love with their recliner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they in love with that. And a television? <whistles> just, I might as well just, I done got everybody's dander up. Might as well just go ahead and go with the flow. Amen. The television, I, I'm not saying not to have one. I got one of them things too, but I, I, I control what comes across the thing. You understand what I'm saying? And there ain't much of what's in modern-day television comes in my home because it ain't fitting to watch. That's why I use YouTube, amen, and Netflix and some of the stuff that's got the older programs, amen, where they were at least uh, two-thirds clothed, uh, half-clothed at least, uh, amen, and, and they got something that ain't in one bedroom soon out a scene after another, and they don't have gays such like having babies together and raising children and all the other filth and ungodly mess, amen, that's on it. But there's some today, man, television is their life. Amen. They, will, they, they sleep by it. When they walk in the house, it's the first thing that you do. Let me stop. Let me mark my spot right there. I want to be able to get back to this. I wonder how many people walks around with a remote control in their pocket. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many people, as soon as you walk in the door, where's my Bible? Uh, see, where's that at? Uh, did I leave my Bible in the kitchen or? Did I leave my Bible out? Where's, where's my Bible at? I've just got to have the comfort knowing i got it right here in my hand. No, but you turn that television on so you get the comfort, amen, of listening to that thing uh, and to know that it's a jarring out a bunch of music, amen, or a bunch of words, uh, amen, a bunch of filth the most of the time. Uh, amen, see how addicted we get? And you know what? You know how to shut America down today? Cut their thumbs off. Amen. That's how you get them back to church. Amen. As the babies are born, uh, amen, in the hospital, they ought, to, uh, they, ought to, they ought to cut their thumbs off so they can go to church. I'm just teasing. Just teasing. I wasn't serious. Amen. But that's the only way because there's too much of this. That's all they think about. And texting one another. How are you today? And what blows my mind, you have them sitting on a church pew, one on this end, one on the other, and they're texting each other. All they have to do is talk. Amen. You go to a party somewhere, birthday party, uh, amen, and, and they're texting each other. They got 12 people sitting around in the room. They got 11 phones going. They're talking to somebody in another state or whatever. Why don't we talk to the ones in the room with you, dummy? 
Amen. You can talk to them in another state at another time. Amen. They can't even stop doing it. I had a funeral last year. I won't ever forget it. As long as I live, there's somebody back there standing up while I was preaching. They was texting. I thought, here we are trying to give reference to this person that has died. This is their day, and you can't see off the blessed phone long enough, amen, uh, to give reference, uh, amen, 15, 20 minutes while the man of God's are preaching the Word of God, and it shows that the Word of God's not important to you. And it said, let me go ahead and hit another lick or two. And you know what? It bothers me, and I know it probably ain't none of my business, but I'm just going to get right in your business anyhow because this is one of them getting in your business messages. Hey, man, I wish to goodness that respect would come back to the funeral homes and to the church where people didn't wear caps inside the house of God and they don't take Coca-Colas inside the house of God. Hey, man, they don't take it into the funeral chapels. Hey, man, they need to have reference. Hey, man, for those that are dying and those that's died and they ought to respect the house of God. But all oh, they'll bring potato chips. Hey, man, we don't let them do it here, but they'll bring potato chips. Hey, man, and Kool-Aid right into the church. Amen. Bring you a glass of water if you're a diabetic. If the baby's is sick and they got to have the little juice, we understand that. But I'm talking about adults, amen, that ought to be man and woman enough to go one hour without drinking Kool-Aid, amen, Cokes and tea. If you're so addicted to iced tea that you can't stay off it for an hour, you need to come up and let me anoint you with all in the name of the Lord and get you delivered from it. If you can't stay off the cell phone long enough, uh, amen, to go through a 45-minute funeral, you need to get your preacher, if you're watching my television, uh, amen, to anoint you and pray for you, amen, so that you'll get delivered, uh, amen, from the spirit of television, uh, amen, or, 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 or telephone, uh, amen, and texting uh, and those things. And now they're on Facebook. Some's are whining. Some's are pining. Amen, but we need to go to church and start some dining. We need to eat from the Word of God. We need to eat, uh, amen, from the Master's table. We need to learn, uh, amen, the most important things uh, in life. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. When you make up your mind, if you want God or mammon, what's mammon? Mammon is money. It is property. It is power. It is the things of the world. Do you want God or do you want the world? Amen. You need to make up your mind. The Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in how many of his ways? All his ways. Amen. The Lord uh, does not want us, amen, to be unstable. Amen. The Lord said in, uh, the word says in Revelation 2, I believe it is, uh, amen, that uh, I work you either hot or cold. But because that you're lukewarm, uh, I will spew you. The word spew means to spit or to vomit you out of my mouth. If he's saying I'm going to spew you out of my mouth, he means I'm going to cast you out of the church. Amen. If you are lukewarm, he wants us to either be cold and don't identify ourselves with him in any way or be what we say we are, have what we uh, profess to have, uh, amen, actually possess that, fall in love with him or get completely out. He respects you more to serve the world than to be half in and half out. Boy, ain't that rough preaching. Amen. Guess who I heard that from? The Lord. <laughs> Guess where I got it at? It wasn't out of the... Baptist Journal or the Pentecostal Gazette. Amen. It come out of the Word of God. Amen. It's where it came from. Amen. And, and we need to learn the Word of God. And we need to make up our minds. Amen. Who we're going to serve. And we need to decide. Amen. Whether or not we're going to serve the Lord. Whether or not we're going to go all the way. Well, Jimmy, you just are picking on me today. Well, if I started picking on you, I started it last night when I was studying because I didn't know you were going to be here. Hey, man, if I'm picking on you, then I went all the way to Chicago to get you, and I never met you before. Hey, man, if I'm picking on you, I went all the way to Japan, hey, man, to, uh, to get you on live streaming, and I never met you and talked to you in person before. So, therefore, I don't think it's me that's picking on you. 
I think it's the Lord trying to get you to wake up uh, and to jar you. He's trying to jar you before judgment. Boy, that'll preach, the two J's, jar you before judgment. Hey, man, most of the preaching today, uh, they don't need morales or move anybody, let alone jar them. Hey, man, some folks today, you got to rattle their teeth to get them to say, huh? I'm going to quit here in just a minute. How many folks did you ever talk to and give a whole complete conversation and you say so what do you want to do about it and I say huh everything I just got through saying is what I was asking oh I have my mind on something else what won't that preach <laughs> it's like a lot of congregations today they got their mind on something else they got their mind on everything in the world they don't hear we had a guy that, that worked with us Many years ago, he's, I think he's done gone on and be with the Lord now. I hope he went to be with the Lord. I, I didn't know him all that personally. But anyway, I, I knew about working with him some. How that he was. He had a hearing problem. And he couldn't hear a bomb go off, they said. You could holler for him. I'm not going to call his name. You could call his name out. Hey, hey, his name. Hey, hey. He'd not hear you. But you could walk right up. I'm just going to say George. That wasn't his name. I'm just going to make up a name, okay? I'm going to call him George, even if George wasn't his name. You could be standing here talking, and George could be way over there. You can say, you know what? We need to see if George can do that. And he'll turn around and say, yeah, I can do it. That's called selective hearing. Hey, man, there's a lot of people got that disease, selective hearing. They pick out the sermons that they think's for somebody else and say, boy, he poured it on them now. <laughs> I, get old, I guess old Phyllis will come down off her high horse now. That preacher will eat her up today. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, he got old Jim there. Oh, boy, he poured it on Jim. I can tell you that right now. He hit him hard. Yeah. But see, it's selective. But that thing you hit us is like, See, I, I'm supposed to have the charcoal here at 5 this evening, and I, <laughs> I believe we're going to start cooking somewhere around 5.30. I think it's what uh, what you say, preacher, huh? Selective hearing. Hey, man, it's kind of like the old woman. You heard this old story before. This, I'm going to share this, and I'm going to quit. Boy, it's been different today. There was this old lady. She was attended church for a number of years, and the preacher's up preaching. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And she said, amen, preacher. And the preacher saying, Thou shalt not steal till you'll go to hell. She said, Amen, preacher. And the preacher said, You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. She said, Preach it. Amen, brother. And he said, You don't need to be smoking these cigarettes and a dip in that snuff. And this tobacco juice was running down the corner of her mouth where she'd been dipping snuff right before church. She said, You done quit preaching now and going to meddling. Ooh, it's all right, as long, as, you, <laughs> long as you're not talking about me, it'll be all right. Amen. You eat them up. You tear them up. I had a man came to, I said I was going to quit. I got one more story. I had a man came to our church, and I've had several down through the years, and I'm certainly not going to call any names. If I did, some of you that were been in ministry here for years, you know exactly who I'm talking about. But he would sit back there in the congregation. I'd be a preacher, and he'd take that foot out, and he'd say, amen, praise God. Amen, that leg, just like that right there. Boy, I mean, he'd be, he'd be back there saying, whew, man, whew, ooh, boy, whew. boy, I mean, he'd really be getting in it. And I know when I hit him on something, because he'd, he'd soul up. He didn't have no amens. He didn't. That leg stopped a quivering. You know, it calmed right down. Now, amen. He sat just as quiet as a church mouse. He didn't amen or nothing. He, just... <laughs> yeah, he thought I was a tearing somebody else up. He used to call me pretty often and talk to me on the phone. He said, Brother Jimmy, he said, I tell you what, man, I mean you let them have it today. I said, Helen, he said, oh, I looked over at this and that and somebody else and said, I know you was a, I mean, you was a done trimmed her toenails off. I know that. You was a blown them out of the water today. I said, well, I don't know about that. He said, oh, yes, I know them. I know how they are. <laughs> that happened. I ain't, ain't no kidding. Amen. <laughs> I've had some down through the years of all kinds. But, oh, you let you preach on something that he thought I was a straightening him out on. He'd take it personal. 
Oh, you'd pout. And I'd have to do 15, 20 minutes of therapy. I ain't kidding you. I'd have to get on the telephone. I said, no, brother. If Yeah, you are guilty of this. And yes, you need to straighten this out. But if I got a problem with you, I'll come talk to you your face. I ain't scared of you or nobody like you. I said, now you need to get that stuff out of your head. What you need to do is repent. You're guilty and you know you are. <laughs> you get this stuff care of and it won't bother you. Amen. So that's what you deal with. But anyway, some people just wants to hear what they want to hear, selective hearing. They want to build, uh, amen, on what they want to build. And I was talking to a pastor friend of mine the other day, and he was talking about <coughs> different ones that goes to church and how that they do this, but they wouldn't do that, and they do this. And I said, Brother, I've done had to learn a long time ago. You've got to quit letting them get to you. I said, Here's the thing about it. I know for a fact they'll drive you nuts. I said, here's the bottom line. People will do what they want to when they get ready, and me and you are not going to change them, and God won't force them. We have to make a decision. And if they choose to live that way, just look right over the top of their head and pour the coal on them. Love them. Be there for them. But we're not their job, their judge, and we're not their keeper. All we can do is present them with the Word of God and be there for them. Today, what have you chose to build upon? Are you building upon the rock, which is Jesus Christ, or are you building upon the sand? Is your hope in what you can obtain in this world? Is your hope in what you can possess? Is your hope in your joy in what you can proclaim to have accomplished in life, or is your hope in your joy in trying to reach others for Christ, live for Him, and build up the things your treasure in heaven where the moth and the rust cannot corrupt and thieves cannot break through and steal. Especially those of us here in the Western world, possessions and accomplishments that we accomplish in life is always a hindrance to us. We can talk about look at what the Lord gave us and the Lord gives us these things. But if we let those things cause us to miss church, we let those things become more important than it is to serve God, we've missed the mark. When we were getting ready to build the church, or we were building the church, some were saying, we need to spend a little more time, and let's get this sheetrock sanded off, get it looking a little bit better. I said, let's slap some paint on it and get the doors open. Let's get the law saved. I said, back here where nobody can't see it in the closet, it ain't going to make no difference anyway. Probably ain't going to be but two or three of us back here. The rest of them won't come. Hey, <laughs> man, let's slap a coat of paint on. We got the sanctuary looking good. Let's slap a coat of paint on. Let's get the doors open. See, it's not so important how beautiful the church is, even though I think it all looked nicer than our homes. It's not important the color of the carpet. It's not important what kind of pews you sit in or what kind of chairs that you have, but it's all about whether or not we're serving the Lord from the heart and it's real, or we're serving the Lord and our hearts are on other things, other places. Most of the pastors I talk to today says the same thing. There's lack of commitment. I said there used to be, there's none now. <laughs> lack of commitment. Not very many are committed because they're, they're teeter-tottering between the world and Jesus. I want Jesus when it comes time to talk about the Lord, but I want all this other stuff. And I'm going to think about the Lord every now and then. And some folks, the only time they ever go to church is during a funeral. That's the only time they go is to a funeral of a close friend. It's the only time they hear the Word of God. Today, are you ready to meet the Lord? Have you made your mind up? I'm not pressuring you. If you want to continue to live in sin and head toward hell and take a chance on dying and screaming to the top of your lungs for the rest of, your, uh, rest of eternity, if you want to take a chance on that, then that's your choice. But I don't think it's a wise one when Jesus died on the cross to set us free from our sins. And all we have to do is give him our heart, confess our sins to him, fall in love with him, start building upon that rock. That rock is the word of God. Jesus Christ, and then we'll have a good life here, and we'll have a home eternal in glory. One day after a while, 
that will make the Taj Mahal look like an outdoor toilet. That's how beautiful that heaven's going to be. Stand with me, if you would. Good night, goodbye to those watching by, uh, live streaming. We won't be live streaming tonight. We're going to have our special service, preaching, and uh, music and stuff out back, and we'll be having fireworks and all that stuff for the after the 4th of July uh, celebration we'll be having tonight. So we won't be live streaming tonight, but we'll be back Wednesday night at 745 for the live streaming, folks. God bless you all. Thanks for joining us today.